Hello my loves, my name is Jay and welcome back to my channel. And guys, today we have got a little book haul. It's not that little, but it's also not that big. Um, what am I saying? <laughs> but I also have a really fun unboxing. So if you remember back in my New Year's resolutions video, um, and that's not a that's not too long ago. If you just go a couple videos back, it's right there. But I decided I was going to not subscribe to any more book boxes, not by big companies at least, um, or bigger companies like Owlcrate, Illumicrate, etc. And not for any real reason other than I just didn't know what to do with all the excess stuff that came in the box. Everything was so cute and so wonderful and so bookish and themed, but I didn't know exactly what to do with all of it. And it just felt like I was packing my house with all this stuff that I just didn't need and I just wanted the books. And I was running into situations where I just didn't always care for the book, so it felt like I was spending $40, $50 on books that I really wasn't jiving with when I could spend $40, $50 at my local bookstores. And that was my biggest thing is that I wanted to support more local bookstores. So with that in mind, during this social distancing era that we're experiencing right now, I decided to take a look at my local bookstore, see what they were offering. Some have local delivery, curbside pickup, etc. But one of the most more interesting um, things that one of my local bookstores uh, was offering was a surprise book box. So I have trying not to show my address, a book box from Epilogue. And Epilogue is a brand new bookstore in a town across, just a little bit across the way um, in Chapel Hill. And they do surprise book boxes. I'm trying to find my scissors. Okay, get it together, Jay. Um, so I ordered the book box. It was $50, probably closer to $56 after shipping. But the nice thing is, is that they pick books for you based on, you know, what you want. There are a couple things that you can get. Um, I'm opening it now. And also, depending on the level that you decide, because you can get a $25 level, a $50 level, or a $100 level, um, they will pick some books for you, and then they will also add local goodies. Um, and I was pumped about that, because I one, I get to um, support a local bookstore, but then I also get to support other local, you know, shops. So that's super cool. All right. Let's actually open this box. Oh my God. Okay, I don't know what it is about opening boxes on camera, but for some reason I fumble even more. Um, and if I look distracted all of a sudden, it's because there are a lot of squirrels out and about in my yard and I can see right through it. Um, anyway, let's get back on track. So here is the box. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. I've got some books here. Okay, so the first one, is Sock Hill Girls. Now, I should say that when I asked for the box, they had just like a normal adult fiction and then they had um, a middle grade option. And so, I, so that really, and they're a more like, I'm not gonna say hipster, but I'm gonna say a little hipster. They're really like a cool trendy spot. So they have a lot of interesting um, books that explore and push boundaries. But your girl here is a very traditional like fantasy reader. One of the reasons why I wanted this box because I knew they would push my boundaries. So Sock Hill Girls, I've heard about it before. I don't know much about it, so I'm gonna read the back for you. Okay, who are the Sock Hill Girls? Marion, the new girl, awkward and plain, weighed down by tragedy and hungry for love, she's sure she'll never find. Zoe, the pariah, luckless and lonely, hurting but hiding it, aching with grief and dreaming of vanished girls. Val, the queen bee, Gorgeous, privileged, a heart made of secrets and a mouthful of lies. Their stories come together on the island of Sock Hill Rock, where gleaming horses graze in rolling pastures and cold waves crash against black cliffs, where the kids whisper the legend of an insidious monster at parties and around campfires, where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by ravenous evil that no one has dared to fight until now. Oh. I did not know that this book was about that. 
I don't know what I thought it was about, but I didn't think it was that. So I'm excited as heck to read it. This one's a, she a thick book. So I'm excited, yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, so the next book in my box is by V.E. Schwab, The Near Witch. Now, funny story about this. I had downloaded this on Libby to listen as an audiobook, but I never got around to it. And then it got like, you know, because it's a library audiobook lo loan sort of thing, what am I saying? It got released back into the world when my time was up. So I never got to read it. And the only books I've read of V.E. Schwab is Tunnel of Bones. And I did love Tunnel of Bones so much. That's her middle grade series. So I'm very excited. And I have a lot of other V.E. Schwab books, but I just haven't gotten to it for some reason. She's fantastic. Um, so if you don't know what this is about, um, the Near Witch is an old story told to frighten children. If the wind calls at night, you must not listen. The wind is lonely and always looking for company. There are no strangers in the town of Near. These are the truths that Lexi has heard all her life, but when an actual stranger, a boy who seems to fade like smoke, appears outside her home on the moor at night, she knows that at least one of these sayings is no longer true. The next night, the children of Near start disappearing from their beds and the mysterious boy falls under suspicion. As the hunt for the children intensifies, so does Lexi's need to know more about the witch that just might be more than a bedtime story and about the history of this nameless boy. Guys, okay, aside from the fact that the title has the word witch in it, which is all, all me, I'm all into witches, but also I don't know what it is about the idea of moors. I just think moors are probably like a creepy place, but also a beautiful place. I don't know. We don't have any moors where I live, or I don't know if there are any moors in the US. Is that wrong? I feel like they're always in England. I don't know. But I'm excited to read this. Such a good pick. Thank you, epilogue. Okay, there's more. Okay, here's another thing. I got chocolate. Okay, so this is from Escazio Chocolates. This is roasted pepito and guajillo chili. Yeah, 74% 74, 74 cocoa. So this is a nice sort of middle grade dark chocolate, which is exactly what I love. I'm very excited because Eskazu is very, very local, as in like, it's like just down the road in our downtown area. So this is super delicious. I've had this before. I am a loyal buyer of Eskazu, so I'm very excited to try this. I haven't had this flavor. Oh, lol fifth season came in my book box and you know I have so many books I went on so many book buying binges that um of course I knew that there was a possibility of this book being or rather a book being doubled in this box which is fine which is fine um but I didn't love the fifth season I really didn't so that's fine I will maybe I'll give it a go again I don't know now I have two copies of a book that I DNF'd. <laughs> it's okay. Epilogue couldn't have possibly known and it'll just go on my shelf to add to my collection and maybe it'll go to a very lucky someone who actually I know exactly who I'm going to give this book to. Never mind. Gifting it the moment we're allowed to be within six feet of people again. Okay and then we've got a little note and it says Jessica. That's my actual name. Jay is a nickname. Thank you so much for helping us keep Chapel Hill vibrant and for helping us curate your surprise box. We hope you love it as much as we loved creating it. Your epilogue team. That is super sweet. And I didn't think I'd get three books, I'll be honest. Um, but this is a cool haul. Um, aside from that season, oh God, okay. Um, but that's fine, that's fine. Maybe I'll read it finally and then I will gift the nice looking one. And the chocolate, guys. Chop. Oh, should we test? Should we? Uh, okay. Eh, nah. I don't feel like eating on camera right now. Okay, just kidding. Let's try it. I don't know why I'm shying away from eating on camera because that's what I used to do on YouTube a lot. Ooh. I also just, I don't know how to open anything daintily. Oh, it's melted. It's good, but I'm sorry guys. My camera cut off for whatever reason, but I was just in the middle of trying this chocolate and I did try it. And unfortunately, because it melted, it's not the same. Um, 
Maybe the next time if I order this box again, I will ask for no chocolate because it's rather unpredictable with the mail system, especially now that it's getting warmer. Um, but yeah, it's just not great. Um, but I do know with full faith that if I had bought this bar fresh, bought in, who, what is bought? In? Um, if I had bought this bar fresh, it would have been a hundred percent amazing because I love Escazoo chocolate. So I'm going to put this aside. All right, now to the rest of the book haul. So recently in my um, weekend vlog, you'll know that I placed a local delivery order with another local bookshop and I got two books. So the first one, Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson. Um, this is really exciting because I have been wanting to read this book for so long. Now, I don't know too much about this book except that there is allomancy magic, which has something to do with metals and a heist. I think, I think. Okay, so the back says, once a hero rose to save the world, he failed. For a thousand years since, the world has been a wasteland of ash and mist, ruled by the immortal emperor known as the Lord Ruler. Every revolt has failed miserably, yet somehow hope survives. Hope that dares to dream of ending the empire and defeating the Lord Ruler. A new kind of uprising is being planned, one that depends on the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the determination of an unlikely heroine, a teenage street urchin named Vin. Where a hero rose to save the world and failed, can a young hero heroine succeed? So that's very exciting. I'm very excited to read this. Um, I read Skyward last year or the end of last year. God, Skyward or Brandon Sanderson was amazing. And so I'm convinced that now Brandon Sanderson can probably do no wrong. I'm very excited to be just a little bit into this book. Okay, my next book that I got from that local bookshop with the free local delivery, The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden. And this is the second installment. Um, the first book in this series is The Bear and the Nightingale. And if you do not know what The Bear and the Nightingale is, I'll talk about that instead of what this is about, just in case there are spoilers. Um, the bear, and the, nightingale, ugh, the bear and the Nightingale. I'm so excited. I'm just talking. Talking! Um, the Bear and the Nightingale is about a girl named Vasya and her and her family live in medieval northern Russia. They're in like the deep wintry woods of Russia. Um, her father is a lord and her mother ends up dying in childbirth with Vasya and so he brings home a new stepmother who is not feeling the provinciality of her situation now. She came from Moscow, I believe, and into this sort of country terrain, and she brings with her her Christianity. Up until then, Vasya's family followed the old religion, and Vasya would, you know, put out little saucers of milk and stuff for the little house patron demons or whatever. So now an old evil is sort of arising it's because um, the old magic that protected the area that Vasya lives is being weakened by the onslaught of Christianity. Um, it is an excellent book. I highly recommend it. Catherine Arden's writing is beautiful. It's very fairy tale like very dark and just excellent. So I'm very excited to get into the second installment of this. All right. Now the next couple of books I'm going to talk about is a book haul that I got from a local books or a local secondhand bookstore back before we were all in mandatory self or social distancing, self isolation, whatever you call it. Um, so the first couple of books. The first book I got was The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I don't know anything about this book except that it sounds spooky and I read The Scarlet Letter back in the day. So I'm going to read back to you. In a sleepy little New England village stands a dark, weather-beaten, many-gabled house. This brooding mansion is haunted by a centuries-old curse that casts a shadow of ancestral sin upon the last four members of the distinctive old Pinchian family. Mysterious deaths threaten the living, musty documents nestled behind hidden panels carrying the secret of the family's salvation or its downfall. Hawthorne called the House of Seven Gables a romance and freely bestowed it with many fascinating gothic touches, a brilliant intertwining of the popular and the symbolic and the historical. This novel is a powerful exp exploration of personal and national guilt. Interesting, right? I thought so. It sounds really atmospheric and dark and I'm into it. I have sort of mixed 
uh, reactions to classics. So we'll see. We will see. Also, it's very sunny outside. So if the light changes, I'm very sorry. Um, okay, the next couple of books that I got um, are the Guardians of Gahul. So um, this is the first book. Now I was inspired to get these the first three books of this series because I finally watched the Guardians of Gahul the animated movie um, on TV the other day and I have known about that movie for so long. I don't know when it came out. It must have come out like clo closer to 2010, something like that. Um, maybe the middle teens of the 2000s. And I, it looked so strange when it first came out um, in theaters. When I saw the previews, I wasn't, I didn't understand what it was about. And then the animation looked so intense for some reason, it turned me off. But I finally watched it. Excellent, 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 excellent animated movie. I don't know why I didn't watch it sooner. It's so vastly underrated and not talked about. Ugh. So if you can watch it, watch it. But. I now want to read the books because the storyline is interesting. It's about some badass owls. They kind of make me think of Vikings. I don't know why. So I'll read the first book. Um, Soren is born in the forest of Taito, a tranquil kingdom where the barn owls dwell. But evil lurks in the owl world, evil that threatens to shatter Taito's peace and change the course of Soren's life forever. Soren is captured and taken to a dark and forbidding canyon. It is called an orphanage, but Soren believes it is something far worse. He and his friend Gilfi know that the only way out is up. To escape, they will need to do something they've never done before, fly. And so begins a magical journey. Along the way, Soren and Gilfi meet Twilight and Digger. The four owls band together to seek truth and protect the owl world from imag unimaginable danger. Sounds freaking great. I'm about it. Okay. Okay. All right. The next book that I got is The Witches by Roald Dahl. Oh my God. So sorry for that shine. Um, I have read this book a million times. I have watched the movie with Angelica Houston a million times and I'm very excited when the remake comes out and they better not mess it up because I will throw a BF, a bitch fit you know dang well that I will. Um, so if you don't know what The Witches is about, this is about a young boy, what's his name? Um, doesn't even say. Anyway, it's about a young boy and he, his mom or grandmother back in the day was a witch hunter, or at least I think she was. And um, so he ends up at the same hotel as the Grand High Witch and her giant coven. And he hears about their plan to turn all the children in the world to mice and kill them. Roland Dahl is so funny because he puts these like elaborate, almost like silly plots together and weaves in some very dark realness to them. But this is such a fantastic book. If you've not read The Witches, I don't know what you're doing in your life. But I got it purely out of nostalgia because it had to be in my collection. Okay, the next book I got was also a Roald Dahl book, James and the Giant Peach. This is a fantastic freaking book. Oh God, okay. So if you don't know what James and the Giant Peach is about, it is about a young boy named James. He is orphaned very early. His parents get eaten by rhinos. Um, so he goes to live with his two horrible, single, middle-aged aunts, and they are just so awful to him. And then one day, a mysterious man comes up and offers him adventure, basically, in the form of a peach. Um, I think. Oh no, okay, so actually what happens? Lies, lies. He offers him glowing crystals, um, but then James spills the crystals by an old peach tree and all the magic and the crystals get imbued in the peach and then the peach grows and grows and grows to the point where they set off on a magical adventure with this giant freaking peach and he meets some friends along the way. It's just, it's fantastic. Okay, the next couple of books I will absolutely have to read the back because I bought them on a whim. So I bought two books by Barbara Kingsolver. I have been wanting to read Barbara Kingsolver for quite some time now. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about her writing. I think she's a highly regional writer um, in the sense that she likes to write things that take place in Appalachia, in the Appalachian Mountains, that southeastern region of the US. 
I don't know, okay? Because um, some of her books take place in Appalachia, some of them don't. Um, so let me read this one to you. So this is the Poisonwood Bible, and this is supposed to be one of her like flagship novels. Um, okay, the Poisonwood Bible is a story told by the wife and four daughters of Nathan Pierce, a fierce evangelical Baptist who takes his family and mission to the Belgian Congo in 1959. They carry with them everything they believe they will need from home, but soon find that all of it from garden seeds to scripture is calamitously con or transformed on African soil. What follows is a suspenseful, <laughs> I can't talk. What follows is a suspenseful epic of one family's tragic undoing and remarkable reconstruction over the course of three decades in post-colonial Africa. Orleana Price reconstructs the story of her evangelist, evangelist husband's part in the Western assault on Africa, a tale indelibly darkened by her own losses and unanswerable questions about her own culpability. Also narrating the story by turns are her four daughters, the self-centered teenage Rachel, shrewd adolescent twins Leia and Ada, and Ruth May, the prescient five-year-old. So this is an epic, obviously. Um, I don't read a lot of modern and contemporary books, but there's something about um, Barbara Kingsolver that draws me to her. And I couldn't explain to you why, just like how I couldn't explain to you why Ann Patchett draws me, um, Ron Rash. These are all adult contemporary fiction. They have romance, but it's like a side sort of thing. I don't know how to explain it. It's just fiction. So the other Barbara Kingsolver novel I got is Prodigal Summer. And this is another book that I've heard a lot about. Don't know what it's about technically, but I've heard a lot of good things. Okay, um, Barbara Kingsolver's fifth novel is a hymn to wilderness that celebrates the prodigal spirit of human nature and nature itself. It weaves together three stories of human love within a larger tapestry of lives amid the mountains and farms of southern Appalachia. Over the course of one human summer, this novel's intriguing protagonists face desperate predicaments but find connections to one another and to the flora and fauna which with, with which they necessarily share a place. So there is Appalachia. I really enjoy people that talk about the Appalachian Mountains and that sort of region. I spent a good part of, um, well, I spent all of my college years in the Appalachian Mountains. So I have a very deep love for it. Okay, the next book I have is an Ann Patchett novel called Commonwealth. Um, so Ann Patchett is, has a very, very large part of my reading heart. Her writing is just freaking phenomenal and I just, I can't explain to you what it is. It's just so immersive and a little lyrical, but not too much. It's fantastic. Okay, one Sunday afternoon in Southern California, Bert Cousins shows up at Franny Keating's christening party, uninvited. Before evening falls, he has kissed Franny's mother, Beverly, thus setting in motion the dissolution of their marriages and the joining of two families. Spanning five decades, Commonwealth explores how this chance encounter reverberates through the lives of the four parents and six children involved. Spending summers together in Virginia, the Keating and the the Keating and the Cousins, or the Keating and Cousins children forge a lasting bond based on a shared disillusionment with their parents. When in her 20s, Franny begins an affair with the legendary author Leon Posen. The story of her siblings is no longer hers to control. Their childhood becomes the basis for his wildly successful book, ultimately forcing them to come to terms with the deeply loyal connection they feel for one another. I am into it. I don't know what it is about Ann Patchett, but she has such a way of diving really deep into relationships and connections between people, families, romantic, platonic relationships. They're just, she just does it so freaking well and I love it. Okay, the next book I got was Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now this is also just a beautiful edition, it caught my eye, but one of the biggest reasons I got this was because I started watching Anne with an E on Netflix and at first I really freaking hated Anne. Like I, I genuinely hated Anne. But for some reason I hate watched it. I hate watched it. Uh, a whole season and a half of it. So that's confusing. I don't know who I am anymore. But I figured I had to check the book out because I've heard that 
there are different portrayals of Anne and the Anne with an E is probably not the most accurate so I'm interested to read more about it because the setting is very interesting on Prince Edward Island of Canada and I just absolutely love how absolutely beautiful it is over there so I wanted to check it out plus it's it's a gorgeous copy. Oh and I didn't I didn't even show you this part look it's illustrated on the back how beautiful. Okay the next book I got is Persuasion by Jane Austen. Now guys if you know me you know that I don't do well with classics and then yet I bought like this is my the third classic that I've gotten in this stack. I don't know what's wrong with me um but someone told me a good friend of mine told me that Persuasion is perhaps the most digestible of Jane Austen's books. I love all Jane Austen movies. I will pay good money to watch any Jane Austen movie um but I have tried probably 16 times and over in my life to get through a Jane Austen book, particularly Pride and Prejudice, and have been unsuccessful. So we're going to see if we can get through this. Now I don't know what Persuasion is about and it looks like this is not going to give me the synopsis. So it's out there somewhere. I'm sorry. And the last book I got, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. Um, this edition is basically pristine. Uh, oh, there's a nice little, um, note in here. It was a birthday present. What a charming birthday present. Yeah, I mean, it's got a few nicks here or there, but honestly, it looks great. Um, and I got it for like seven bucks and I was missing it in my collection because I don't know where half my Harry Potter books are. So I went ahead and got it. Anyway, guys, this was a really long book haul. I'm sorry. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing from the Epilogue Surprise book box. Um, I definitely think I will be getting another book box from them, but maybe no chocolate this time just because I, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know down in the comments. Give the video a like. Hit that notification bell so you always know when I've got good stuff coming to you. Bye, y'all.